Everyone, it's Father Sean here with the with the daily reflection, <clears throat> and uh, maybe one of the things to to reflect about today, and and especially with this coronavirus, you know, it, it's given us a lot of time to pause and reflect about the Eucharist, to, to reflect about Holy Communion, about our own desire for it, and there is uh, there's just one, you know, maybe something more just to to reflect upon with this. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we get, we get the reading of Paul uh, kind of uh, communicates or he, he goes over the institution narrative. And we have this reading at Holy Thursday about um, Jesus took bread, he gave, and then he quotes Jesus, take this, this is my body given up for you. After it, though, Paul has a little bit of commentary, which unfortunately we never get in the lectionary cycle. We don't get, uh, we don't get this where we have, to, we have to read this. So Paul says... Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. A person should examine himself and so eat the, and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are ill and infirm and, and a considerable number are dying. If we discern for ourselves, we would not be under judgment. But since we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the Lord. All right, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 through uh, through 32. And so he's, he talks about not eating, not receiving the Eucharist unworthily. And that that the, if we if we do unworthily, we don't we don't drink we don't consume the body and blood, but it, it condemns us. So we should examine ourselves before receiving the Eucharist. And unfortunately, I think this is this has been lost. Maybe there's been some extremes. There have been extremes on one end where people um, only receive communion once a year because they're never worthy. They and they you know they have to go to confession immediately beforehand, and that's the only possibility of them being worthy. That. That doesn't that that maybe in the history of the church that happened, but I wouldn't say that happens today. I think today we're in the other other extreme where everybody who wants who comes to mass goes to communion, or at least there's the desire. Pretty much the only people, and I don't see everything because I'm not out in the pews. Um, but it seems like the only people who come forward for a blessing are those who aren't Catholic. Um, and of course, if you're not receiving communion at mass, you can ask for that blessing, or you can stay in your in your pews. And, and so we kind of need to reflect on, well, why wouldn't I go to communion if I'm at Mass? Well, there's, there's a number of things. So, um, so if, if we're unworthy to approach the altar, right? Like receiving God's grace and receiving the gift of the Eucharist necessitates that we come forward worthily. Not perfectly, you know, we're not going to be perfect, but at least we're worthy vessels. And so being unworthy would mean we're in a state of mortal sin. So if, if we've committed a mortal sin, and this is the constant teaching of the church, we need to go to confession before we go to communion. And a mortal sin, for it to be a mortal sin, we have to know it's a mortal sin. So I might go through some of those so you know it's a mortal sin. Um, so, so committing mortal sin, I mean things like, um, things like skipping Mass on Sunday. We should go to confession before we come to communion. Not missing mass, not like if we're sick or, um, you know, we're with our infant in the ICU or, or things like missing mass and skipping mass are two different things. Skipping mass means I put my, my son's soccer game more important than mass. And if we skip mass for that, it's saying, well, Jesus, you're less important than this, than my band concert, than my, my you know, whatever, than, you know, getting, getting up and getting chores done. So skipping Mass is a mortal sin, and before we present ourselves for communion again, we need to go to confession. Other things, a lot of sins against lust, you know, like pornography, masturbation, those sorts of things, to go to confession before we go, uh, go back to communion. Other serious things, if we steal, if we cheat, I'd say physical harm, all of those things, to go to, uh, go to confession before we present ourselves for communion. All right, so those are some mortal sins, but then the other ones are related to breaking the unity of the church. So if we get married outside of the church, we need to have that regularized. We need to get married in the church before we go to communion. Because what we're saying is we're saying this marriage is more important than Jesus, right? I don't want, Jesus isn't, and his church is not part of, uh, of this marriage. And, and we might say, well, no, I don't really mean that. But by our very actions, that's what we're communicating is that it's more important that I get married on the beach 
or I'm not willing to go through the declaration of nullity process. And those, those are things that we need to have regularized before we present ourselves for communion. And I know that sounds harsh. I know that's not something easy to deal with. But if we believe what we're, what we're, I think we're beginning to sense about the importance and the gravity and the power of the Eucharist, like that should give us a little bit of pause before we just go back and maybe be um, a little too willy-nilly about it. So if, if, we, if we've done these things, we really need to, to get them normalized, kind of get, um, get back in, uh, in shape before we present ourselves for Holy Communion. Another thing is um, we're asked to fast one hour before receiving communion. And that is not that hard. That means like if communion happens 40, 45 minutes into mass, maybe even later, that basically means like 20, 15 to 20 minutes before mass, we should not be eating. So an hour before receiving the Eucharist, we should be fasting. Of course, if it's medicine, if it's something like that, that, that doesn't count. So, um, and then maybe the last reason that you wouldn't receive communion is to build up that desire. I, 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 my, uh, one of the priests I know who's, who's a bit, a bit uh, he grew up in the, uh, in the 50s and the 40s, and he, he remembers not going to communion as much, but one thing it did is it builds this desire. He said we would go to confession once a month and we would go to communion the, the next day after, after going to confession. He said one of the things it does is it builds up this desire. So maybe if we see ourselves being a bit too willy-nilly, with communion, a bit too just kind of lax and not not finding its importance. If we're just kind of, um, it's just becoming another another thing that we do. If we're losing the the kind of the recognition of what's happening, maybe that means one Sunday we don't receive communion, and we try to allow that separation to build up a deeper desire. So there's just some food for thought. I know uh, in times when I was at um, my parish growing up, and sometimes if you wouldn't go to communion, it would feel like everybody's looking at me, right? It would feel like everybody in the pew is noticing that I'm I'm not getting up. And uh, that was just a little something that you would just say, okay, Lord, well, um, that's the way it goes. I'm doing this out of love for you. And I think if, if it happens more regularly, it, uh, it becomes less, it becomes less of like, what's going on? Why, you know, like, um, so I think it needs to be part of our Catholic life. Um, to recognize the power of the communion, to take St. Paul seriously, that we should not present ourselves to the Lord to receive the Eucharist unworthily, but we should come with a clean heart, a pure conscience, and allow the Lord to fill us with his grace. All right, this is the daily reflection for, uh, for uh, today. Look forward to seeing everybody a little bit later. Just a reminder, we do have confessions available tonight at St. Joseph, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and you'll kind of go in the side door. We'll do the whole hands-free business. So take care, God bless, and uh, we'll see you next time.